Apes are native to sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. They once lived in Europe too, but none has ever lived in Australia. Today we ask the question, why are there no apes in Australia? The answer to this question lies within the geographical history of Australia. Today, it is isolated from the rest of the world, as it sits 10 degrees south of the equator in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. But this isolation began millions and millions of years ago. Australia was once part of the great supercontinent, Gondwana, which also contained the land masses that eventually became Africa, South America, India, and Antarctica. Organisms that existed during this time could move freely across this enormous supercontinent. There were no physical barriers such as mountain ranges or open oceans to inhibit migration. The Cambrian explosion, characterized by higher atmospheric oxygen and more nutrient-rich seas, resulted in the initial formation of all major animal phyla. When Gondwana began to break up around 200 million years ago, species were suddenly restricted to the landmasses they now inhabited. Around 40 million years ago, Australia settled into its current position. However, this is not entirely accurate as Australia is still moving. It hasn't stopped and it is moving at a rate similar to the growth of our hair and fingernails, closer and closer to Asia. Regardless, its separation from the rest of the world occurred before apes were even in existence. This meant that the flora and fauna that were established in Australia evolved in isolation from the rest of the world. This has been the main reason why Australia has such diverse and unique wildlife, not found anywhere else on the planet. The animals and plants there adapted to the climactic conditions free from the invasion of other species. Such biotic interchanges that have occurred elsewhere, most famously between North and South America, with the emergence of the Panama Bridge, have resulted in ecological shakeups. Some species became extinct as competition for resources grew fierce and new predators were introduced to the area. Others adapted, became stronger as a result, and survived. But Australia, with no physical contact with any other land masses, was never subjected to any invasions of species, and its life was able to adapt and evolve in its own unique way. At least until the arrival of humans, that is. So what are the apes, and could they live in Australia? Apes are a higher group of primates belonging to the superfamily Hominoidea, which splits into the lesser apes and the great apes. Included in the lesser apes are 20 species of gibbon, whereas the great apes include orangutans, gorillas, bonobos, chimpanzees, and of course humans. Apes are not the same as monkeys. Monkeys possess tails, whereas apes do not. They're also considered less intelligent than apes and more tree-dwelling than apes. But both monkeys and apes belong to the primates. It is generally accepted that primates emerged on the scene around 55 million years ago in North Africa. This was long after Africa split from Australia and the other continents within Gondwana. Molecular analysis and fossils show that a proto-primate called Purgatoris, which resembled a tree shrew or even a squirrel, was thought to live in North America. The species it evolved into spread through Europe and Asia before it migrated southwards into Africa. From there, these primitive primates went on to evolve into apes. Therefore, Africa is where we consider the birth of the apes. The last common ancestor between humans and the Pan genus, which includes chimpanzees and bonobos, existed between 5 and 10 million years ago. We share more than 98% of our DNA with these great apes. Today, they, excluding humans, live in Africa and Asia only. With Australia isolated from other landmasses, apes did not migrate to the continent. They were constricted to the tropical climates of Western and Central Africa and Asia. The gibbons, or lesser apes, are found in the rainforests from eastern Bangladesh to northeast India and southern China to Indonesia. There are three species of orangutan. Only discovered in 2017 is the Tapanuli orangutan, which is restricted to South Tapanuli on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. The Sumatran orangutan is found further northwest of Sumatra, and the Bornean orangutan is on the island of Borneo. Eastern mountain gorillas live in the mountainous regions of Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The western gorilla lives in the lowlands of Cameroon, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, and the Republic of Congo. Bonobos are found within less than 200,000 square miles in the Congo Basin in the Democratic Republic of Congo, whilst chimpanzees live in 21 countries across Central and West Africa. Some primates, excluding the apes, did make it out of Africa. Those found in South America are known as the New World Monkeys, and those in Africa as the Old World Monkeys. They are related, but how did they get to South America? The split between these two groups of primates happened around 40 million years ago. 
Some managed to cross the Atlantic Ocean from Africa and land on the far-off shores of South America. Although this seems like an impossible feat today, the sea level back then was much lower than it is now. Much more of the world's water was locked up as sea ice, and mid-Atlantic islands and atolls were exposed between South America and Africa. These small pinnacles of land would have provided refuge for the primates that made the journey. These primates didn't swim across the sea, instead, they most likely floated across on huge rafts of vegetation that broke off from mainland Africa in heavy storms. The movement of some primates from the Old World to the New World across the open ocean begs the question, why didn't orangutans and gibbons cross the Timor Sea from Asia into Australia? The distance between these two continents is far shorter than the distance between Africa and South America. Much of the Timor Sea dried up when sea levels were lower during the last glacial maximum around 20,000 years ago. This would have made the journey to Australia considerably easier than it is today. However, an imaginary line called the Wallace Line splits the flora and fauna species based on their geographical location. It is a transitional zone between Asia and Australia. Those to the west of the line are Asian species and those to the east are typically Australian. Perhaps there was never a need for the apes to migrate. They are especially unlikely to do so if they can't see land on the other side of any open water, but there are lots of things for them to consider if they migrate, such as climate, habitat, and the competition they may face. The migration of primates from Africa to South America was an accident that turned out to be a successful move for the primates and their subsequent species. Perhaps no such accidents occurred in Southeast Asia for apes to cross the seas and land successfully on the shores of Australia. Of course, Australia does have apes living there. Humans are indeed great apes and our species is thought to have emerged 300,000 years ago in Africa. As we spread across the world, we managed to reach all corners of it. It is believed that humans first arrived in Australia between 50,000 and 65,000 years ago. Depending on the timing, they would have either crossed the Timor Sea or travelled through some of the Indonesian islands to New Guinea. Either way, they would have had to cross open water which makes the ancestors of Aboriginal Australians some of the earliest mariners in the world. These people spread to all parts of the continent, inhabiting rainforests, deserts, and some of the nearby islands. Within 40,000 years of their arrival, the indigenous Australians had driven 60 animal species to extinction. But there was more to come. The first European explorers to land on Australian shores were the Dutch in 1606, and the British established the first colony in 1788. Since then, many non-native species have been brought to Australia and have wreaked havoc on the fragile native wildlife. So aside from humans, could apes live in the wild in Australia? It seems unlikely. Whilst there are areas along the northern and eastern coastal regions that contain tropical and subtropical rainforests, which is typical habitat for apes, the plant life may not be suitable to sustain them. More than 80% of Australians' flora and fauna is unique to the country. It is not found anywhere else on Earth. Therefore, apes are unlikely to find the right kind of food to survive. All of the great apes are omnivores. Some are primarily fruit eaters but will also eat bird eggs, invertebrates, and small mammals, including other primates. Apes wouldn't find their typical vegetation or prey animals in Australia, and would only have limited habitats to live in. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.